the NFL on EA Sports, and we've got the latest chapter of a historic rivalry. It's the Niners and the Seahawks, next on Madden NFL 24. We are in the Pacific Northwest as we get set for football at Lumen Field here in the Soto District of Seattle. Up next, a good one in the NFC West and a wild card rematch from a year ago as it'll be the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Seattle Seahawks. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, this was a team after the Russell Wilson trade that looked like they might be bottoming out. But for years, the Seahawks have had great success in the NFL draft, as you well know. And they've used the last few drafts to really restock this roster. And they certainly have restocked this roster and have gotten back to playing football the way that they want to do it. Seahawks football, which means running the ball with authority on offense. They've added runners, offensive linemen, and now they're just being forceful in the way they're going about their business, the way that they did it when they ran the Super Bowls. Then for the visiting 49ers, you know, they're exciting on the offensive side of the ball, but it's the defense that really provides a lot of stability. They were second by a whisker to the Bills in total defense a year ago. And they have all pro caliber players at all three levels, all capable of taking over a game. Now the Michigan man, Jake Moody, to get us started. And off we go from Seattle. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. So the Seahawks ready to take over on offense. And it is a first-time pro bowler who leads him out, Charles, in his 11th year now, Geno Smith. I still remember back in 2013 when he was drafted out of West Virginia. He was coming off of back-to-back 4,000-yard seasons for the Mountaineers. Hadn't seen as much game time in recent years, but at one point, a capable starter in the NFL. Smith going to go to the air first play. And incomplete to open things up. Really good coverage all over the field that took away his intended read and almost dared him to try for his guy out of the backfield. No surprise on that one. It doesn't connect. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and 10. Throwing now is Geno. And his throw is going to be incomplete. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and ten. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. So two incompletions have led them to an early third and ten. Geno out a throw. Going for Metcalf on the deep ball. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. You get a sense of what this game plan might be. They think they can take a few home run shots against this defense. They tried it there on the opening drive, but that ball's incomplete. On fourth down, ready to punt Michael Dixon. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. The Niners offense set to go to work, and it's last year's revelation, Brock Purdy, who leads them out in season number two from Iowa State. And there's a word that constantly gets thrown around with this guy when you talk to anyone in the building. Potential. They're sky high on what they believe he can grow into in the role of a starting quarterback. In addition, there are plenty around the league who think that as well. And years from now, he can still be leading this offense out. Good starting field position for the 49ers as they have it first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Throwing here, Purdy. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. It's a gain of eight. Brings up second and two at the 47-yard line. Two yards to go, second down. A handoff left, McCaffrey. 
And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They stay on the ground. McCaffrey again. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. 41 yards rushing so far, and this is just their first possession. They've got a new set of downs here. So back-to-back -back big runs, picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing league. I thought this was the <laughs> era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. They didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire out and hit people across the line of scrimmage, and they're clearing space. Our game not even two minutes old, but a quick red zone opportunity. First and 10 right at the 20. Purdy looking to throw. This will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. That's a tough spot for a running back coming out of the backfield because you know he's got to look for the football. Knowing full well, he's got a man coming his way full steam, and he broke that one up. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Back to throw, Purdy. That's going to be caught by Samuel. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he right put one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Here now, third and a yard. They go play action here, Purdy. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Well, only their first drive, Charles, but they talked to us about needing to convert on third down, in particular not letting third and short opportunities slip through their fingers. Well, they were successful right there. And also tells you that they're successful on first and second down as well to get to third and manageable and make them able to pick up those first downs. Now here we are, first and goal. they got to like what they're doing on this drive. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. Purdy. Throw left side, McCaffrey's got it. So back-to-back -back plays each get nothing. And that will lead to a third and goal. Purdy will set up to throw it here. hoping for the coverage holds and now fourth down and how about the coverage here in the end zone that's how you frustrate a quarterback you get pressure on and you take away all of his receivers and he's got to throw it away on third and goal and his kick here is good and the 49ers take a three nothing lead that drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made them kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. 
And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Now Gino. That's to the rookie Jackson Smith and Jigbo. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. They need two. Here's third down. Smith now to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Two drives won't tell the story of this game, but you absolutely have to like how this defense has played thus far. They have yet to allow this offense to get untracked in this one. Here's Michael Dixon now to punt. And a fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 18-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. Play action, now Purdy. The tight end, Kittle, has it on the left side. So the completion good for seven there. And that will bring up second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Four yards the pick up, first down. And Brandon, you know that expression, he just does what he does? <laughs> it sounds trite, doesn't it? But in this case, it's perfectly apt. This is one of the better runners in the NFL. And all he does is just find avenues, find ways to pick up key first downs and big runs. And he'll get this to the 32. Now second and eight at the 32-yard line. Purdy now to throw. Hitting Samuel on the slam. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Play action, and now here's Purdy to throw it. Got a man, that's Ayuk. Now he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. So the completion results there in nine yards, and they'll have a second and one forthcoming. Purdy off the play fake. He'll get this out wide here to McCaffrey. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. Four yards, the pickup, first down. Was that a receiver? 
<laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd learned to ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. And a very elusive run as he'll wind up getting about nine on that one. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. The throw over the middle, taken in. That one good for seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. Up the gut, McCaffrey. And still fighting. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. He'll get 17 on that one, and the Niners have a first down. One thing's for sure, this defense has to figure out how to stop the ground game. He's eating them up here in the first quarter. It looks like they have to go to different forces, aren't they? The conventional things aren't working too well. So I remember a coach of mine saying way back when, when a back's having a great game, you've got to get the ball out of his hands. See how far he can run without the ball. And what he meant was takeaways, knock it loose, because maybe you can't just stop him with just regular tackling. Now on first down, it's Purdy. He'll get this to Jennings over the middle. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Brings up second and two at the three-yard line. Here's second and two now from the three. McCaffrey running up the middle. And he gets halfway there from the four to the two on a gain of two. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who can do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. On third down, it's Purdy. That is caught by the tight end, Kettle. Touchdown, 49ers. Two yards on the touchdown there. And the 49ers are able to add on to that lead. What a great weapon. So often, such a big mismatch. And there's no route he can't run. You name it, he's going to do it. And he's a matchup nightmare for the defense. No matter who they put on him, he's going to win the battle. Jake Moody now for the point after. He's got it, and now it's a 10-0 lead here in the opening quarter. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And it all ends with a George Kittle touchdown. So an early 10-0 lead for them now as they kick it away. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Not only are they in search of their first score, they're in search of their first first down in this ballgame as they come up first and 10. Here's Smith. That's complete to DK Metcalf. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 14 yards that time for number 14. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start for them thus far. A much-needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that 
will continue to help him dig out of this hole. It's complete to lock it. So the completion good for just three. And it'll be second down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rally to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. Play action. It's Smith. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to convert on third and short yardage with a gain of four. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. Ten nothing the score after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Seattle, and it is the Seahawks with the football here. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Straight ahead, Walker. And he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it. And it's second down. Here's a second and eight. Throwing now is Gino. Left side complete to Lockett. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers, 39. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And this offense has been a little slow to get going, but some signs of life here in this second quarter. They're moving it pretty good, and that helps the cause as well. Good yardage and another first down. Walker now on first and 10. And a very determined run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 27. Good effort. They'll get 13 yards for the second play in a row. Sometimes I get almost mesmerized watching these runners who have great vision. You know, those eyes that carry their feet to open spaces, make people miss. I just love watching those guys go to work. A quick throw out to Lockett. So just three yards on the completion there. And that'll make it second down. It's a pickup of three. Brings up second and seven at the 24 yard line. Now Smith. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. They'll try for the first with Walker. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Now Gino on first down. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. Now this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. First down marker at the five. It's second and goal. Gino out a throw. This is caught. It's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up the first and goal.
Back to throw, Smith. He completes this to Walker. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Only a yard in the completion. It's second and goal. They'll look to run with Dallas. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. D.J. Dallas taking it in from a yard out. And the Seahawks have got it back to within a score. Sometimes offenses can get too cute down near the goal line, but there's nothing fancy about this one. As Coach Lombardi would say, we get a seal here, and we get a seal here, and we run this play in the alley. And that's good work to hit the hole hard and finish in the end zone. Myers connects on the PAT. And that'll cut it to three at 10 7. Touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. Brock Purdy in the offense back out there. Last drive, surgeon-like, dare I say, seven for seven. That'll help your QB rating. <laughs> it will indeed, won't it? Can you figure out QB rating? Can you do I it? Can know. you do the formula? No, I just know the higher the number, the better. Yeah, that's what I've been <laughs> that's told, what too. I know. I know that in the NFL, 158.3 is the number they're all trying to get to. I think he was that on that last drive. And now the drive starts with a completion out to the right. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four at the 26-yard line. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. A give running left, it's McCaffrey. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 15 for the Niners there and a first down. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. Purdy to throw it on first down. Connects with Kittle underneath. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it'll be second down. That's a good-looking play to me. The big tight end on a crossing route coming underneath. Sometimes he can gain some serious momentum going forward, can he? Yeah, he can indeed, and pretty well executed there. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second and four. Purdy looking to throw. He'll get this into the hands of Ayuk. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Now a give, right side McCaffrey. 96 yards rushing for him now to this point. Here now, second and four. Again, they run again. It's McCaffrey. What a nice burst there as he'll take this inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. The Niners have the first down on a gain of 11. This guy's well on his way now to a big game on the ground. It's another good run there. Puts him over the century mark in yardage, and we're still in the second quarter. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash. Dropped at the one. 
That's good for 28 yards. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just did the tip of the ball across the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. McCaffrey will get into the end zone for a 49er touchdown. Well, we talk a lot about Christian McCaffrey and what he can do in the open field, and it's easy to gloss over how tough he can be to stop near the goal line. And he shows you just how tough he is on that carry as he takes it into the end zone. Extra point try now for Moody. It's good to make it 17-7. So that drive in total eight plays. And the last play on the drive, the touchdown run from Christian McCaffrey. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. They trail by 10, 17-7 as they come up on a first and 10. Here's Walker to start the drive, pushing through the contact. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Now Gino. To the right side and complete to Metcalf. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. the middle here's Walker and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage that play ended for a net loss thanks to Javon Hargrave an awful lot of congestion in the middle third of the field but how about our defensive tackle right there he just hold the line he provided some push and smacked the ball carrier down for a loss now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss sticking with Walker on second down and he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. 49ers have an extra defensive back on the field. A nickel set for third down. From the gun, here's Smith. He'll find Metcalf. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers' 44-yard line. Ten yards and a Seattle first down. Yeah, these are the types of plays they're going to need to hit on if they're going to get back into this game. It hasn't been the greatest of first halves, but this is a nice throw here on third down, and they keep the drive going. On first down, Smith. Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. And the 
Seahawks have cut it back within a score. But not only, Charles, did he beat double coverage to make the catch, and then as soon as he did, locked his gaze upfield and made sure to reach the end zone. Go grab your dictionary, partner. Look up determination, and his picture is going to pop right up. How about him getting through multiple defenders, finding his way through coverage, and making sure he got to the end zone? That's a big-time play right there. Extra point up and through by Myers. And the lead's down to a field goal at 17-14. to the 25. Out comes Christian McCaffrey with the rest of the offense. He's already cruised past the 100-yard mark. We haven't even gone away for halftime yet. He might not want halftime. <laughs> all right, why cool off? Keep well, everybody here. <laughs> let's stay out on the field and keep going. But all that being said, everything is really working well for them. The play calling's been excellent. The blocking's been terrific. And obviously his vision and legs have hurtled him to this big number so far. We could be seeing something really special here. And we'll see how much they give him the ball here. Purdy's throw taken in by Samuel. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. A six yard and the ball on the 30. Here's second and four. The throwing here, Purdy. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Jennings was the one he was looking for, and it's third and four. Here's Purdy. And that is incomplete. But the pressure there on third down, forcing the Aaron pass. Fourth down coming up. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. On fourth down, the Niners trot out Mitch Wisnowski to punt the football. Fielded just inside the 30. A very nice punt that time, but they get 11 back on the return. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. The Seahawks going to take over now late in this first half. And with good starting field position and three timeouts as well in their pocket, no reason not to try and put a late scoring drive together. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at the 40. Throwing is Smith. He lets it fly for Lockett. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. That's a really good job in execution. They avoided the flag downfield and avoided giving up yardage for free. Really good coverage. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. They're going to look to throw. Left side, he finds Smith and Jigba. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. Smith on first down. And that nearly a turnover, but it's incomplete. Oh, fortunate to retain possession there, and it's second down. 
Those are the ones you dream of as defenders. I think if he gets eyes on the ball a little bit earlier, he might come away with it. Instead, it's going to wind up as just an incomplete pass. Smith throwing again. It's caught. Lock it. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Could be four down territory even if they don't get this, but they need just a few inches here on third. A shotgun snap for Smith. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Well, that one fell incomplete after being tipped in the air. But I have to tell you, I had a bad flashback of going to head to the stadium stairs in practice because what we were always taught, any ball like that, if it's not spiked towards the ground and you actually tip it up, then that's an error on your part because now you've given hope to the offense, maybe help create a big play for them instead of going up and either intercepting it or knocking it down. I ran many a stadium step for my errors. The Seahawks go for it but can't convert, and the 49ers are going to get the football back. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 38. They'll send a tight end in motion right. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. Second down at six now from the 42. From the shotgun to McCaffrey. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Here's third and three. Purdy will set up to throw it here. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Now a timeout. Seven seconds left in the first half. First down, it's Purdy. And that went to the right side and incomplete. No receivers open, so who's forced to put that one into Puget Sound? That's a great job defensively blanketing those receivers. And ultimately, a smart idea by him just to get the ball out of there. And you see the clock almost empty, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. Final play of the half, Purdy. Looking deep for Jennings. Now throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. So we are at halftime here on Christmas Eve. As we send you cross country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment. But welcome everyone to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports halftime report. We saw the former All-Pro Christian McCaffrey up to his old tricks in that first half. He's already over 100 yards rushing for the game and has a touchdown run as well. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point.
field goal the difference. 17-14 is the score. Back underway here now in this third quarter. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Here comes the 49ers offensive unit as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. But Charles, for them, pretty good first half on the ground. They had some success running the ball in quarters one and two, and they've got the lead now, a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive in the third quarter. Yeah, believe it or not, you and I have noticed that this great game of football has shifted towards pass first, run second. So for me, it's really nice to see some of these teams keeping the ground game is a big component of their offense, and it's working pretty well for them now. And let's face it, they can continue to do damage with it, and in addition, it sets up the pass game really well for them, too. Second and 10. They'll give it up to McCaffrey. A nice little juke. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. 125 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. They've been running it well all game, and why not? The big guys up front, they're just having a ball, creating monster holes for their guys to run through. Here comes third and about a foot. They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey, and he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. But it wasn't a goal line situation, but how about the goal line formation on third and short? They went in and went heavy. No surprise that it was going to get the football. How about the power exhibited there? Yeah, that was just put a hat on a hat, drive forward. Nice job to pick it up. Play action, and now here's Purdy to throw it. And this is caught, Jennings. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. He got 29 yards that time. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 38. Back to throw, Purdy. He'll get this complete to Charlie Werner. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. Nice idea, nice concept there. Line him up on the left side of the formation, let him sneak his way across, coming back underneath, put it in his hands, let him get a few more yards after the catch, too. Great way to utilize a tight end on the drag route. On first down, Purdy. That's over the middle and caught by Ayuk. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. Just picking up yardage in bunches here. These last few plays, they have moved right down the field. And just like that, they can be set up with a first and goal. Purdy sets up to throw again. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. It'll go as a loss on the play. Not what you need down here. It's going to be second and goal. And that's a great job of tackling right there. If he could have made the first man miss, maybe he could have taken it into the end zone. Instead, they stopped him pretty well right in his tracks. And you often see that in the red zone. Offense has to be quick. In this case, the defense was quicker. Now Purdy. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. Boy, that was lockdown coverage there. He's scanning for someone to come open. And that was great work to blanket everyone. And in the end, he's just got to throw it away. Well, they've been so good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? Purdy. Toward the pylon, but it's incomplete. Timing's crucial in any route thrown, but when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback. Are my feet going to get down inbounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. And his kick is right there. It's good, 
And they stretch the lead to six. It's 20 to 14 now. So it was a three-point lead at halftime, and they double that with a field goal here. And I think defensively, you've got to be okay with that because you kept this game within a touchdown. Your hope is that you've inspired your offense to put a drive together, get in the end zone themselves, and hopefully get you the lead. So after the main field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. DJ Dallas to return it from his end zone. They had tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Now we'll see what this Seahawks offense has in store with their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half, and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get the ball in the end zone. Now Gino on first down. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. Little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. On second down, here's Smith. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over at that time, and it's gonna lead to third down. Out of the gun, Smith. That is caught, and he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Well, part of their struggles in the first half was their inability to convert consistently on third down, but how about this well-designed play? Gave himself plenty of options and able to get the hook up and keep the drive going. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Gino down to throw. It's complete to lock it. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A good pick up there, 21 yards. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. Up the middle they run, it's Walker. And he's gonna get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right at a yard. In every game, teams are looking for that momentum shift and that run there. The offense feels like, hey, maybe we can get something going, but defensively, they've slowed them down the entire game. They don't want to turn into more. They're gonna try and figure out a way to take it back on this next play. Now it's Smith off the bootleg. And he's got Smith and Jigba. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. Jackson, Smith and Jigba, 35 yards. And the Seahawks are an extra point away from taking the lead. Well, they were down six at intermission, but they quickly erased that deficit. And Charles, now they've got a chance to take the lead. And while being down six points, obviously not an insurmountable lead. Tying a game up, that just relaxes a whole team, doesn't it? And now when you have the extra point and you go up, you really feel good about what you've accomplished. Myers connects on the PAT, and that will put them on top here in the third. Touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. 
And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line. So bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision. Loses him about four yards. Christian McCaffrey and his 49er teammates back onto the field. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back, because that means everything's coming together for you. The big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. Open man is Samuel, complete. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And not much doing. He'll get this only up to about the 36. A tackle made by Boye Mafe. Now second and nine. This is McCaffrey on the give. And the hole closes quickly there. He gets maybe a couple up to the 38. here for the Seahawks on third down. Shotgun now with Purdy. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he let him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground, incomplete. Here comes the 49ers punter now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. It'll be a net of 39, 41-yard punt, two on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. And out now come the Seahawks. For this offense, Charles, remember the last time they were out here, marched it nearly the full length of the football field, and a lot of the attack went through the air, so now they're seeing if they can duplicate that performance. Okay, if I show my age a little bit, partner, because I can hear my high school coach, John Ford. I can hear his voice in my head. Laddie, when you put the ball in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. For the way the game's being played now, this is just part of what they do, so I don't think they should change anything at all. They've been dominant, keep throwing it around. Throw out wide to Walker. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. On second down, it's Walker. And he'll be upended here after a pickup of three, getting it out to the 25. An extra DB for the 49ers now on third. Here's Smith. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. That, I believe, will put him over 100 yards receiving for the game. Yes, it will. And he's got a first down to boot. Now, that's absolutely frustrating for a defender. Had a chance to get him on the ground before he got to the sideline. But what great vision and understanding where he is on the field as he headed for the marker and picked up the first down. Quick throw out to Lockett. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it's second down. From the gun, here's Smith. Over the middle, finding Smith and Jingba. 
Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Fake the handoff. Now Smith. Going right back to Smith and Jigba. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And it's second down. To the air again, Smith. No surprise there, Chase Young wrecks that play with a sack. Yeah, some real defensive resistance there. Said not so fast to a good drive. They had marched to the end zone the last time out. Now a tough spot for Geno Smith and company after the sack. It's third and long. Throwing now is Geno. He's got his target. That's complete. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all set and go. That was no third and two. That was third and 16, but they get the conversion anyway. Brandon, that was a nice round that time. Lined him up on the right and worked his way all the way across the formation. One of the toughest routes to cover because you keep waiting for the ball to be thrown or him to break something off. He goes all the way across the field, right to left, for a big play. I couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. Now Gino. Inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice game there. This one goes for 20. It'll be first and goal when we come back. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Seattle, Washington. And we've got a dandy here. A one-point game as we begin the fourth. To throw is Smith. And he finds Locker in the end zone. Touchdown, Seattle. A five-yard touchdown catch. And the Seahawks get an important score there to extend their lead here this fourth quarter. And down near the goal line, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. The extra point now coming from Myers. And with that, the lead is up to eight. A 10-play drive that time. And it ends with a Tyler Lockett touchdown. Touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. As San Francisco's offense returns to the field. There's still plenty of time here in the fourth quarter. In just a one-possession game, down eight, they'll be looking for the touchdown and two-point conversion. A field goal here on this drive does very little at this stage. 
Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at their own 22. And he'll start by handing this off to McCaffrey. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. From the 24 now, here's second and nine. Purdy now to throw. Slant route connects with Debo Samuel. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And now we've got a third and four. Throwing here, Purdy. This ball is caught. He's got Debo. And he is going to have a Niners first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's a much needed first down right there. Look, they're down by eight. So logic says they don't have to get a touchdown out of this drive. But the way things are going, I don't know if I'd put it in the hands of my defense here. You might not get the ball back at all. So if a fourth down situation comes up, I'm thinking hard about going for it right here and right now. There's Purdy on first and 10. This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that'll pull you out of that spot that they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. And Debo going to have a Niners first down as he's inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. A handoff left, McCaffrey. There he goes, left side. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. 164 yards rushing now on 23 carries so far. He showed his shiftiness and his explosion to take him all the way down near the goal line. Love that description, and it creates momentum. Maybe you hand it to him again since he's got it going, or do you fake it to him and throw it to a teammate? Right now, the options are wide open. Now, throw the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. I absolutely love that play call there. They just came up with a big play. They've got momentum and they come back and take the shot at the end zone, just unable to complete it, but I love their aggressiveness. And you feel like the defense, a sigh of relief, could have been back-to-back -back really big plays. Here's Purdy. Touchdown, 49ers! Debo Samuel from four yards out. And the 49ers have a chance to tie things up as they trail by two here in the fourth. So part one of what they needed is done. They get in the end zone. Now you have to imagine we'll see a try for two. And that's what the book says, but defensively, they can't hang their head right here. They still got a chance to come out with the lead if they make a play. All right, now what can the Niners do as they face a big two-point conversion here? Purdy will throw for it. And he's going to be sacked. They came after him. He couldn't get away. Remains a two-point game. And a failure to convert and tie the game. Now the pressure shifts back to the defense. But I think it was the right play. I think it was the right call to try and tie the game there. Kick an extra point, you're still down one. What's the sense? I, I like what they did. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. And he'll be 
tackle just shy of the 25. DK Metcalf of the Seattle offense about set to take over once again. They have to like what they've gotten from him in this game. Think about the accumulation of catches. Eight. The yards per catch now, because you're getting more than a first down every time he's touching the ball. This is the kind of game you want when you're able to throw it out wide. Absolutely. Over 100 yards, has the eight catches. Now Gino on first down. Smith and Jigba with the grab. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Ball on the 30 now. Here's a second down and four. Smith now to throw. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by Tashad Gibson. And he's able to get it back to right around the 27. Their passing game has been spectacular this afternoon. Finally, a win for the defense. You think maybe there was an adjustment there. Finally gained a measure of... I don't even know if you call it revenge, but got a play done against him, and that's been difficult for them all game long. Out on the field now, here come the 49ers. A golden opportunity for them now following the interception. They need to try to at least get three. Obviously, a touchdown puts them in a much more secure position. First down, Purdy. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Now a second and ten. Purdy off the play fake. That ball caught. Brandon Ayuk. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. 23 yards on the play. And remember, this drive started off following the turnover. And they've taken no time working their way down the short field. A nice connection there. And now they're looking at a first and goal. Purdy. Get only two there, and it's second and goal. Back to throw, Purdy. And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. They wind up losing a yard on the play. And now what we have here, a third and goal. It looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackled him for a loss. Again, McCaffrey. Trying to find a lane, but he finds nothing but defenders. Stop for no gain at the two-yard line. What a stand so far defensively, and now that's going to bring up a fourth and goal. Got to kick it, right? I mean, even the short yardage, you, you boot this thing, don't you? Yeah, but I know how aggressive you are. I know what you want. You want to go for it, don't you? You're feeling it, aren't you? Yeah, but treat it like a football game, not like men. I like that. Fight the temptation, kick the field goal, because if you go for it and don't get it, you put a lot on your defense in a short amount of time. And this one is right through. And they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So they got the turnover started with great field position, but in the end, the defense able to hold firm, and they only get three out of it. And I like what you said right there, that defense able to hold firm, backed up into the shadow of their own end zone. The goal post right behind them. They had to make sure they didn't give up the six, and boy, they came through in a big way. To them, even though they gave up three, that's a win for their side. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. 
And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Hands it to Walker to begin the series. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Geno down to throw. He finds Smith and Jigba. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor. And it's a first down. Throwing is Smith. He'll find Metcalf. So the completion good for seven there. And it'll be second down. That completes it again to Metcalf. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 38. Now quickly here to Smith and Jigba. And they'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people off the block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. Walker now on first and 10, and he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. They work now on second and nine. Sticking with Walker on second down. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. Now they'll have it first and goal following that gain of 17. I know at times today's NFL sure feels like everything's about the guy throwing the football. But if you've got a guy who can run it and move it and gain this type of yardage, you'll take him each and every time. And the question now, how do they want to work the clock here on first and goal? A field goal would give them the late lead. Walker. We'll take this into the end zone for a Seahawk touchdown. Some good running there at the end of the drive. He had the burst that set up the first and goal, and then one play later, he's in the end zone. Brandon, what I liked about that sequence is I'm not sure who made the play call, but they understood the situation, understood the momentum. A nice hard-charging run, give it right back to him and let him cap things off. Here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion. Now a toss coming right side. It's Walker, and he is not going to make it. So they won't be able to move this lead up to a touchdown as it'll remain a five-point ball game.
the touchdown. Here's Myers to boot it away. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. And we're going to stop play here at least momentarily. It looks like there is a 49er who's in some discomfort. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. They'll come up first and ten here. Now Purdy. Throw outside. McCaffrey's got it. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's 49er football here as we get your reset. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. It drives some people crazy to see those short throws underneath. They've got to find a way to gash the defense downfield. Now second and four. Here's Purdy. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. Ooh, the juke. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Well, partner, they've used him quite well out of the backfield in this one. And here's another nice example. They set up the screen, and he's able to pick his way downfield for a nice gain there. Here's first down. Purdy to throw. Throws the out loud and completes it to Samuel. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14 before he's out of bounds. Final 60 seconds as they face a second down. Purdy to throw. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. And now the focus is really clear. They need to get that first down and either get out of bounds or maybe use one of those timeouts. No tougher place to be in a spot like this than Seattle. Here's third down. Here's Purdy to throw. And this nearly intercepted. Probably should have been. Had he caught it, it would have sealed it. Instead, one more chance coming up on fourth down. Partner, they've got one chance left to keep this one going. And I think for you and me, let's think along with their offensive coordinator now. Has to think back, cycle through every play of this contest, and remember what's worked and what hasn't. Because right here, he needs the best play of the game in order to keep this one. And they've taken the lead here in the final minute. So many practices we've watched over time where the offense works on scoring late in the game and finding a way to win, as we just saw there. Just saw it right there. Now can they preserve that advantage that they just got? So now an extra point doesn't help much. They'll try to go for two to make the difference a field goal, and they can lead it by three. They'll try and throw for it. It's complete. And he'll get into the end zone. So now a field goal would only tie as they up their lead to three. So they make the decision. They want a three-point lead versus a two-point lead, and they got it. Yeah, at this stage of the game, it seems like the exact right thing to do. Put a little pressure on your defense, but the biggest thing now is you're making the other team chase you.
So after the main field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. So Gino and the Seahawks down by a field goal. A little over 40 seconds to go. They need at minimum three points out of this as they come up first and 10. Smith to throw. And that's incomplete. than 40 seconds remaining. Here comes second and 10. Here's Smith. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. Oh, man, late in the tight ball game, every play so critical, you feel like you've got to find a way to come up with that football. That was put in a great spot, but it just didn't want to stick in his hands. That's a big letdown. Smith's going to throw it. And the throw there going to be incomplete. With that incompletion, reality is staring them right in the face. This entire game is down to the next snap. Fourth down, 10 yards to go. Here we go on fourth, Smith. And it's knocked away and incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Niners take over in terrific field position. No surprise, they try to throw the ball on fourth down, but it gets batted down. They don't pick it up. A well, little football 101. When you're going toward that quarterback, you see he's gonna start to throw. Get your hands up, Get right? your hands up, affect the play, and then everyone, get your hands up. When the ball gets to the receiver, moment of truth, knock it away. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. McCaffrey running up the middle. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they get it with just 19 seconds left on the clock. So second and nine, and you'd have to figure just about all 11 probably crashing the line here. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. They got to get it to the 21 here on third down. McCaffrey on the counter, and he is going to lose yardage here. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in the football game. So here we go. It's Jake Moody now in a big spot. This to swell the lead to six. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. And that will double their lead as it's up to six. So he splits the uprights. And has to be a nice feeling. Right when I left his foot, knew it was good. Yeah, just like a good three-point shooter in basketball, right? Release the ball, fall back on defense without even looking. You know it's going in the hoop. Jake Moody to 
So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. One last throw here for Smith. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, it took us until the final play, Charles, to officially decide a winner. Although on that last play, they were so backed up, it would have taken a miracle, and they couldn't get that miracle done. Well, I like how you stayed with it because we both knew that this had to go down to the last play and neither side was going to exhale until that play concluded because we've seen the improbable before. A couple of laterals, maybe some poor defense on the back end. They might have gone all the way to the end zone. In this case, though, it didn't happen. 